Rankings. Hello and welcome to round 22 of the TPO Rankings Show, a show all about Australian football through the lens of the TPO Rankings. You can think of it like the FIFA World Rankings, but for 362 Australian football clubs, I've got Jake joining me on the line from Brisbane. Jake, how are you this evening? Cody, I'm doing very well, thank yep. you. I'm excited to start getting my sleep back into a normal pattern now that mm. the World Cup is over. Yeah, I'm, I've got to agree. I mean, the World Cup's great. Love it, love it, love it. But um, it is nice to catch up on sleep and uh, be fully alert during the daytime as well. Um, so hopefully you guys at home can see our production values skyrocket now. <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> Don't put the pressure on yeah, us. Pretty much. So this week, uh, we, well, last week we... we uh, previewed, sorry, four games, and now we're going to recap them. So I'll go first, Jake. So I had Lions and Morton Bay up in Queensland MPL. Now, over on Instagram stories, we posted all these voting. We uh, predicted a Lions win. 75% of you guys and supporters on Instagram stories agreed, and we're getting some impressive voting numbers over there now. So um, thanks very much to everyone who is voting. Uh, the result, Lions got up 1-0. So Lions, with that win, Lions up to 22nd on the TPO rankings to be the highest, well, they already were, but uh, continue to be the highest Queensland team on in the rankings outside of uh, the A-League, Brisbane Raw, of course. And Morton Bay, with that, dropped one spot to 28th. Now, my other game, my second game was in the Victorian uh, MPL 2 division, and that was Altona Magic hosting North Geelong Warriors. So... We backed Magic, as did 71% of the supporters on Instagram stories. The result, Altona, Magic, win 3-1. Uh, they, gain, they gained the TPO points, obviously, with that win, but they stay in 52nd on the rankings. North Geelong for six places to 102nd. So they're out of the top 100, 100 unlucky North Geelong, uh, but you certainly can move back up. Jake, your two games. Yeah, so my first one was in South Australia, and over there it was the fourth last round. Um, Adelaide Comets versus Campbelltown City. Campbelltown City out in first and, and um, chasing that premiership. Uh, TPO rankings, though, with Comets being at home, said uh, that Comets would be slight favourites and had the edge. Of the supporters, 69% of you voted for Campbelltown City, and the result was that Adelaide Comets got up 3-2. So TPO ranking algorithm got a point there. Um, supporters miss out on that. And in terms of the TPO rankings impact, Campbelltown fall two places there down to 23rd in the country. Mm -hmm. And Comets stay where they are at the moment in 25th. And that was the first one. The second one that I had was in Tasmania, Launceston City versus Hobart Zebras. Uh, TPO rankings had Hobart Zebras as the favourites despite being away from home. Supporters, this was reasonably close, but 56% of you also went with the Zebras. And that's the way the result ended up going as well. So a 3-2 win for Hobart Zebras there. Uh, and that result means that Zebras are up two places in the rankings. They're now 88th in the country. And Launceston fall two spots to 147th in the country. Okay, well, yeah, thanks, that, Jake. That, so that was four games. Jake, how's this? We got all of them right, four out of four. That Not might bad. be the first yeah. time that that's happened. Maybe we've done it one, one other time. The supporters got three out of four, so we get one point up on you guys again. We're now on 40 points, uh, supporters on 35. So we've, we've opened up that, that lead to five points. Um, now, you guys, obviously, we, I think we've got five games this week to vote on, but the season, the, you know, there's not too long left. There's still some games, obviously, to be had, um, and we'll obviously be doing things over finals and stuff. So really, you've still probably got a good two months, uh, eight, at least eight shows to go, but you need to start catching up. Now, Jake, um, <laughs> in the rankings, anything else worth mentioning? Any, any movements? Um, we'll probably touch on a couple of these in part two, so I'll keep it short, but... The top 25 clubs, um, although there's been a little bit of shuffling uh, this week in the last seven days, those 25 clubs remain the same, so none have dropped in or, or mm -hmm. moved um, or moved in or out. But Edgeworth and South Melbourne are the two clubs just outside of the top 25, and they're kind of knocking on the door. Uh, the lowest-ranked club, just to jump right to the other end of the TPO rankings, uh, has changed this week. So, like you mentioned before, 362 clubs right now. So the club that is now 362nd in the TPO rankings is Park Ridge from Brisbane's Capital One League, which is the fifth tier of football. Um, they've fallen three places to be that bottom-ranked club at the moment after a 13-1 loss over the weekend. Mm. Um, and I went and had a quick look at the, how their season is going, um, and it is not pretty. So unfortunately for Park Ridge, they've lost 17 out of 17 league games. 
they've scored only 10 goals. And how's this? In 17 games, they have conceded a whopping 105 goals. So they are having a very uh, tough season and probably justified why they are mm. down towards the bottom there in the rankings. Oh, well, that sucks for them. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, well, Sorry that's, if you're from Park Ridge. Yeah, unfortunate. So that's part one of the show. I didn't really pre tell you what we'd be doing this week. And um, that's because we kind of made it up only in the last hour or so or... So Jake's put together some nice little images. Um, we're basically saying thank you. Thank you to the clubs that have provided us with jerseys this year. So I think we've got four clubs each. Um, as you can see, I've got the line. I think Jake will be touch on lines. I've got that RP shirt on tonight. I've got some jerseys behind me. Jake's uh, the same. We're just going to run through each of these clubs, see, it's a bit informal, but Jake has put together some nice little images, stats and stuff. So we'll get them up on the screen to talk to. Bit of a show and tell. Bit of a show and tell. Um, and just talking through each club very briefly to touch on how their season's going. So Jake, I'm going to kick things off. I'll just bring up this image here with uh, RPA Leichhardt. I'm wearing their jersey now. Um, oh, I won't. I've got the, the name and the, the number two on the back. So thanks very much to RPA. Of course, everyone knows Arby. We talk about them um, every few weeks just because they are, at the moment, the, the highest ranked um, non-A-League club in the country and actually above a few, uh, I think, two uh, Wellington Phoenix and Central Coast Mariners, two A-League teams. They're ninth on the rankings. In the last 10 games, they've had eight wins, one draw, and one loss. Um, they're actually, I'm just, if you're looking at this image, our data goes back to, I think, the start of, yeah, start of 2013, and right now, they are at the highest point they have been in that history. So they're literally in um, in the last five years, they're at their peak uh, performance, heading into the FFA Cup clash against Port Melbourne Sharks uh, next week. So I think it's, yeah, I think they're up on ne next week. We'll yeah. touch on some of those games um, probably in, in next week's show as well. But thank you very much, Arpia. Having a great season. We really appreciate the, the jersey and the gesture. Jack, they also sent Jake a jersey and a pair of shorts as well we got each. So, Jake, um, now you're going to touch on which club are you going to go for? Uh, I'll start with Edgeworth Eagles because that's the one that I have on at the moment. So um, you can see kind of they haven't got the, the full body shot, but I've got the nice kind of red V oh, going Jake, on. I think everyone wants to see a full body shot. The full body <laughs> shot. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Um, it's, yeah, just this black shirt, red V, it's it's quite a nice one. Um, they've got a, a random number on the back there for me as well. Um, and this one, I guess, is is a good one for the rankings as well. Edgeworth Eagles currently the highest ranked in uh, club in northern New South Wales, MPL. Um, they're ranked 26th in the country. And just to kind of read off a couple of their stats, uh, they're, they're sitting in first on the table at the moment. Uh, they're three points clear of second. They've got a game in hand. And we've got them down running our simulations at about a 96% chance of winning the league there this year. So um, it'll take quite an effort from the clubs behind them or a fall from uh, Edgeworth to, yeah. for that to change. Um, they're just behind, just naming a couple of the clubs that they're ranked behind. Uh, Pascovale from Victoria, Adelaide Comets from South Australia. They're ranked ahead of South Melbourne in Victoria, obviously, and Moreton Bay in Queensland. Um, and probably their bogey team at the moment, just to, out of interest, Hamilton Olympic and Landon Jaffers seem to give them a little bit of trouble over recent years as well. So, mm. um, yeah, looking good for the, the premiership there. And like you mentioned, thanks to Edgeworth. Um, and we should also mention some of these jerseys, um, like most, most of these clubs we're talking grassroots clubs, don't have um, much merchandise for sale definitely not jerseys in most cases so some of these uh, have been ones that we have been able to find a, an online shop or something and, and purchase uh, some of them have just been generosity from the clubs and, and you know sending us something um, that yeah. we've been hoping to, to sh wear on the show so um, which we're certainly doing right now <laughs> yeah and I, and I, I guess the reason I said as well is because for the ones that we did uh, buy I just wanted to give a shout out because if somebody likes the jersey then uh, by all means, go and have a look at it because it helps, obviously, the grassroots clubs with a little bit of income. Um, yeah. And Edgeworth was one of those that um, they did have it up on their Facebook page, I think, not too long ago. So if you like cool. it um, and you're interested, go and check that out. Nice one. All right. I'm going to, I actually didn't have a full look at the stats there. Some of those stats you'll read, I'm going, oh, I might have to read those for the next club. So I'm going to touch on <laughs> Gwellet Croatia. Um, they sent us a full kit, actually, and gave us some socks and. Uh, to both of us, well, Croatia in WA Division One, so the the second tier in uh, in the West. Now they're sitting top of the table right now. Um, they've got Adelaide Comets in the FFA Cup. Um, they're currently 133rd on the rankings. 
they're 64.8. We've got about 64.8% uh, probability of finishing on top of the on top of their ladder. I think they'll they'll finish. I'm, I'm more confident than that. Yeah, they're just having a great year. They're um, I was talking to the coach um, over Facebook message uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they've just um, just come up uh, through the through the ranks through the leagues and. There's a bit of controversy. We're not sure even if they finish top, if they'll be eligible to uh, for promotion or not due to some other rules. So I haven't heard any update on that, but I, I have fingers crossed that whatever happens there, um, you know, Guelph can go up if they if they deserve to go up. So thank you very much, Guelph. Very much appreciate it, and really looking forward to your FFA Cup clash against Comets. I know that's going to be really challenging. Um, yeah. You know, Comets are such a great club. They're actually ranked like a hundred and like over 100 spots above you on the ranking so a big ask but it's going to be really interesting to watch jake your second second club so the next one here i'm going with is uh heidelberg united so here's the uh, just holding up the jersey here this is their what they call it their um heritage, heritage jersey yeah. i think it was yeah. yeah so it's kind of one of these special release ones that they put out earlier in the year quite a nice one i, I ended up this is the first one i actually got because i liked it so much um and the club's obviously doing a, a promotion for the year and, and selling them. So I jumped on that one. Um, and Heidelberg for a long time were the highest non-A-League um, club in the rankings, uh, only recently having fallen a little bit behind Apia. Uh, so they're currently ranked 10th. They're ahead of both Wellington uh, and Central Coast Mariners, the A-League clubs. Bentley Greens is the other Victorian club who is uh, reasonably close behind, well, very close behind them right now, actually. Uh, and... Yeah, one of the top clubs in the country outside the A-League. So they're currently first in the Victorian NPL. Um, we've got them about 81% chance of um, finishing first and winning the Premiership this year. Um, and then Bentley Greens is the, the one sitting right behind them challenging. And then a little way off is uh, Avondale FC, who uh, our, our simulations say are a long shot. So it's really out of those two clubs, but Heidelberg definitely favourites. Um, their bogey club over the past few years has been South Melbourne from a from a TPR rankings point of view. Uh, although the, the these three clubs have all really struggled against Heidelberg, um, and that's Port Melbourne Sharks, Melbourne Knights, and while they were in the NPL, the, the Goldburn Valley Suns um, in the few games they played really were lost a number of TPO points. So. Mm. Um, yeah, Heidelberg, keep an cool. eye on them. They are also in the FFA Cup. They have, I think it's Charlestown, yeah, Charlestown it City Blues. Yep. Um, and I think that's on the second um, game night in okay. the FFA Cup. So I would expect that to go Heidelberg's way reasonably con convincingly. But um, I guess we'll wait and see. Magic of the Cup, Jake, you never know. Exactly right. Okay, well, my third club is Mitchelton from the uh, FQPL, the second tier up here in, in Queensland. Uh, they've provided me with one of these jerseys. Thank you very much. Um, Kurt from from Mitchell from Mitchy. Now Mitchy are funny ones. They, they're sitting mid table. They're um, seventh at the moment, 138th on the rankings. They're not having the greatest of years, as you can sort of tell by the bottom of the of the image I've got there. The graph over time, they've they've sort of fallen off um, over the last year or so. Now, going into the season, um, this brand new league here in, in Queensland, they were, the FQPL, they're sort of I think tipped around the around the places to at least push for promotion, and uh, it hasn't really fallen that way for them, unfortunately. Not the greatest of years. Um, I like those stats there. You got Jake, the the weakest, and their bogey teams and stuff. So their bogey teams, uh, well, Peninsula Power, who who we touch on in a second, who have already uh, won the league with plenty of games to go. So it's probably everyone's bogey teams. The other teams, South and Albany Creek, their weakest against uh, over the, the five-year history we've got here. Strongest against Wolves, Holland Park, and Mount Gravatt. So um, I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. But hopefully, uh, Mitchie can can pick themselves up. Maybe uh, there's slim chances of, of making finals. We've got them at 14% making finals and, and rebuild for um, 2019. Jake, your your next club. Yeah, and before you move on from Mitchie as well, I just want to mention that if you look at the graph at the bottom that we were showing before. Um, is you know, they, they jump up in terms of their TPO um, score uh, in that, I think it's 2013 year. And I have to double check it, but I'm almost certain that that is the year, Cody, where Mitchie were playing in the Capital One League at the time in Brisbane, so mm -hmm. below the Brisbane Premier League. Um, and I think they went 23 games with 23 wins in the league, so mm -hmm. it was like a phenomenal year. Um, and it happened to be the year where there was no promotion to the BPL, so they, they went through all that effort and um, weren't awarded with the promotion. I've, you probably remember that better than I do, Cody. Mm. 
Not so, really. <laughs> not really. <laughs> All right. So next up, I have um, another Queensland team, and that's Lions FC. So these, this is a very fresh shirt. We are, I only got this one on the weekend. I, I went and watched Lions play Morton Bay, and this is the away jersey. So Cody, you might have the um, the yeah, home it's hanging one there. Up, it's hanging up on the wall here. Hanging up. So I actually really like this away jersey. I think it's quite nice. Look, it's even got the tag on it, so it's yeah. it's really fresh. It hasn't even been um, worn outside yet. Um, and just uh, now I think about it, Cody, we've done well with some of these jerseys just in terms of the clubs and where they're sitting in their respective leagues because mm. a, a number of these clubs are, are quite Top high. Of the table, and, yeah. yeah, and Lions is another one. So Lions um, is out in front. Uh, in the Queensland NPL, they won the top of the table clash 1-0, as you mentioned, um, over the weekend. Their last 10 games, they've won eight of them. In fact, the last eight games they've won, uh, and they had a draw and a loss just before that, so they're in quite good form. Ranked 22nd in the country, and we've got them at about 85% probability of winning the Queensland NPL at this stage of the competition. Um, yeah, not much to say. Actually, just another one you mentioned uh, for, I think it was RP earlier, same thing for Lions. They're currently, if you look back at their um, history since 2013 in terms of a, a TPO ranking or TPO score, they're at the highest they've ever been. So, yeah. and, that, and it's kind of been building for that over the most of their history. So it'll be quite an accomplishment if they, um, as our numbers say, that they probably will, will, if they win the league in their very first season in the Queensland NPL. Yeah, and that unfortunately they they did draw the the local competitors um, Olympic in the FFA Cup in the first round. So yeah. a bit of a shame, of course, uh, the, the two teams from the same competition playing each other, but be a hell of a game, and um, one of those are guaranteed to go through. So all right, I'm going to finish on Peninsula Power. So as you say, Jake, we're, we're bloody blessed with top of the table teams at the moment. Power. Um, this is from their 2015 Grand Final win. This jersey here. Thanks very much, Power. Um, and John from Calander FC organising this one for me, actually. Um, yeah, so Power, obviously, they're just having such a great year. They're the highest-ranked third-tier third tier club in the country. Um, they, were, they were put into the FQPL this year for those outside of um, Queensland, and everyone kind of tipped them to, to win the league, and they've already done so with, I think, five, six, seven, game, whatever it is, games remaining. Um so they're just, they're just killing it. They unfortunately had that big, big loss to Lions, the club you just talked about, Jake, in the FFA Cup after beat, they beat Strikers 3-0 and then the next round got spanked 5-0 to Lions, which sort of, sort of put a dampener on their otherwise incredible season. They've In 20 games this year, they've won 19 and drawn one. So they've dropped you know two points all year. They've already yeah, already bloody won the league, already, already got promoted. So... Can't wait for them to be in the um, MPL next year. I think they'll be a, a top four side in the MPL, if, assuming you know um, they keep their players and, and coaching yep. staff and everything. Um, but yeah, looking at that graph down the bottom, they're almost at their pretty much at their highest point. I think that loss, uh, that win against Strikers maybe a month or so ago was their highest point, and they dropped a few points after they they lost to to Lions. But yeah, what a what a great club um, season they're having. And, and it's a really well-run club too. A good good place to go and watch football. They do a really good job there. So definitely deserve to be in that um, NPL, the top tier next year. Jake, uh, you got one more club? One more. And this is, um, I'm pretty sure, I probably should have checked. Um, <laughs> I think this is the lowest ranked club that we have um, picked up a jersey for. This is in the NPL 3 in New South Wales. And it is Stanmore Hawks. So um, this is kind of one of those ones that I actually got this jersey before they were even in the TPO rankings. Uh, <laughs> and for a, uh, you know, MPL3 is tier four, I guess, in the country. And, and at the time when I was kind of putting the word out that I wanted to see if anybody was selling their jerseys, um, Stanmore Hawks was just getting their shop up and running. So um, for a yeah, low low tiered club um, to have a little shop where you can buy this sort of stuff I think it's really cool um, I like the jersey as well quite nice but um, Stanmore Hawks some in some stats ranked 268th in the TPO rankings as I said in the MPL 3 in New South Wales um, struggling in the MPL 3 this year they're down in 12th out of 14 clubs um, they've in 18 games lost 10 of them only had 4 wins this season so in a little bit of a I guess a bit of risk of relegation down to the state league, but um, at the moment they're outside of that relegation zone. Um, some of the clubs, I guess, again, these will all be tier three and four clubs uh, that they 
are being matched up against. So they're weakest against Western New South Wales Mariners uh, and Sydney University and strongest against Interlines and Rydalmere Lines. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at their graph at the moment, they're probably all very close to the lowest point they've been at in since 20, early 2013 in, the, um, in terms of a TPO score. So appreciate the jersey. It's um, quite a nice one, but uh, unfortunately the rankings are not looking favourable for Stanmore Hawks at the moment. No. All right, well, that was good, and um, that sort of wraps up the, the eight clubs, eight jerseys we've got at the moment. Really appreciate it again. Um, love everyone, you know, love back to you guys for, for giving us some jerseys, and Jake, you've obviously spent a bit of money and bought some too, so supporting those clubs too. So thanks very much. Let's move on to part three of the Hold show. On, before you do, oh, Cody, yeah. let's just say, um, and we'll probably ask at the end anyway as a reminder, mm -hmm. If you're watching this right now on Facebook or YouTube, um, if you listen to a podcast, maybe it's a bit harder, but on, on if you're actually watching it, leave a comment. Tell us out of those jerseys, what's your favourite? Mm. You know, there's some, some quite nice ones. So Definitely. Um, I might actually have a think about that and leave a comment too, Cody. But, cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for that. Um, so, yeah, part three, we've got five games, previewing five games. I've got two. Jake's got three. I'm kicking things off. How could I go past this game? Hoddleberg versus Bentley Greens. Every time these two teams play, obviously it's going to be one of the games we preview. Top of the table clash between uh, two of the best three teams outside the A-League, Arpia from New South Wales obviously being the other one. Still six rounds to go in the Victorian NPL. Um, I think seven for Heidelberg. Um, if, they, if Heidelberg do win this, they will go five points clear with that game in hand. So Bentley Greens really need, need to at least hold them to a draw here. Otherwise, it could be start to slipping away. Uh, Heidelberg going as slight favourites, 44.5% probability of winning. My next game is in, uh, where are we here? I've just lost my spot. So Western Australia. So we're going to um, Western Knights. Sorry for that, that little delay there. Western Knights hosting Rockingham, Rockingham City. So fourth at home to second. Um, Gwellop at top of the table, as we mentioned just before, their jersey's over there on the table. They're three points ahead of Rockingham. So uh, Rockingham really need to sort of, to keep pace, there's still a fair fair while left in this season, I think. I can't remember the exact amount of games, but there's still a while to go. Um, they go, and surprisingly, Jake, Rockingham must be having a really good season and not such a good season last year because they're still ranked down at 134th, whereas mm. Western Knights are ranked in at 99th. So Western Knights, yep. um, albeit two spots behind on the table, they go in as, as favourites at home, 51.1% probability. So a bit of a chance there maybe for the supporters on Instagram stories to vote vote in the way of the inform team Rockingham against the favourites, Western Knights. Jake, you've got three games to wrap us up. Yep, so I'll go back to South Australia like I did last week and again with the Adelaide Comets. Um, so Adelaide City are at home to the, the Comets this week. Um, we, we've talked about this a couple of times, Cody. I can't see the Comets challenging for the title at this point there. They'd need a miracle, but um, they have drawn with Metro Stars two weeks ago. They beat Campbelltown City last week, and this is the other club that's ahead of them this week in Adelaide City. So um, for those looking to, to put a vote in on this game, I think Comets have been in really good form against the top sides. Um, and if they can beat Adelaide City, I think, uh, or even hold them to a draw, that's just about Adelaide City's season done in terms of um, the, the Premiership Challenge. Mm. So, yeah, I'll pick this one because it'll be... Either way, we'll know a little bit more about how the, the last two weeks... So three weeks to go, after this week two to go, it'll, um, yeah, know a little bit more about how that South Australian League will pan out. Uh, and in terms of the probability, sorry, I was just about to skip forward, but Adelaide City, 54% probability of winning. Adelaide Comets, 25% according to our numbers. So, as I say, Comets probably... In with a the shot there. Um, yep. Next one is over in Western Australia, and it's Perth Soccer Club versus Bayswater City. Uh, these are the two highest-ranked clubs in the Western Australian NPL uh, at the moment, uh, along with Coburn City, who are up there. Um, they're both three clubs probably the most likely to challenge Perth Glory for the title, so Perth Glory out in front at the moment. And a loss here for either club would just about, or essentially would rule them out, I think, um, from being able to catch up to those top few teams. And a draw, to be honest, doesn't do either of them any good either, so they're really going to want to get something out of this game. Yep. Um, Perth currently sitting in fourth on the ladder, Bayswater in third, so as I say, they really need to start chasing Perth Glory down, who are in first. We're saying that Perth Soccer Club has a 50% chance uh, probability of winning, and Bayswater City 28%, so 
Um, yeah, reasonably one, not entirely one-sided, but I would have thought it'd be a little bit more even than that. So we'll see how that one pans out. And my last one here is, where are we? We're back in Victoria for a relegation battle. Um, Kingston City versus Northcote City. Um, and Kingston City currently sitting in 13th out of 14 clubs. Northcote 12th out of those 14. And the bottom two in Victoria, automatic relegation. And the third bottom goes into a playoff. So at the moment, both of these clubs are in that relegation zone. Uh, we've actually got them in our simulations, both of them at least finishing the bottom three here. So if we're going to be wrong on that, one of these clubs will need to get three points and, and try and catch those in front of them. So it's a pretty important one. And I think I, if either of, if it's a draw or if one of these teams, um, whichever team loses, I think it'll pretty much condemn them mm. to relegation at this point. Um, although there have been a few surprise results in Absolutely. the Victorian NPL, yeah. so... I won't, I won't say it's a definite, but I think it's a pretty important game in if either of these clubs want to survive. For sure. Well, that's it, guys. Instagram stories, get over and vote on those five games on Wednesday evening when I post them up. Otherwise, that's the show. Again, um, go and let us know which one of your, your jerseys is the favourite. We'll list them out, list the, five, the eight teams out and that we previewed in the middle of this show. Let us know. There's some cool jerseys going. So, um, Jake, anything else from you? Um, if you play for a club or know a club that has a shop that actually sells jerseys, because I know there's not a lot of them out there, let us know that too, because um, as I say, we've got a bit of a collection going. I'd love to keep it going. Hell yeah, that'd be awesome. Fill the walls. Fill the walls with jerseys. That's, that's the goal. So, Well, Jake, thanks uh, very much for joining me this evening. Thank you, Cody. I appreciate it. Cool. Thanks, thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you next week.